right, let's have one take a choir book and turn to page 25, page 25. Y'all all stand and help me sing. We'll do the first and second verse together, and then we'll do the chorus, and then the third verse last. <laughs> Country where no twilight shadows deepen, unending day where night will never be. A city where the storm clouds never gather. Oh, this is just what heaven means to me. A place where there is no misunderstanding And from all empathy and strife we're free No unkind words to wound the heart are spoken Oh, this is just what heaven means What will it be when we get over yonder and join the throne upon the glassy sea? To join our loved ones and crown Christ forever. Oh, this is just what heaven means. And when at last we see the face of Jesus, the fool whose image of their love's softly, and when they crown him Lord of Lord, I'll be there. Oh, this is just what heaven means to me. What will it be when we get over yonder and join the throne upon the glassy sea to join our loved ones and crown Christ forever? Oh, this is just what heaven means. What will it be when we get over yonder and join the throne upon the glassy sea to join our loved ones and crown Christ forever? Oh, this is just what heaven means. All right, there's a reason I asked Jeff to read that this morning. It's a song, and that's because I'm preaching from it. I've had this one on my mind. Last few weeks I preached on Isaiah, and we're going to do it this morning. So where you, we just read Isaiah 12. I'd like to, why I love the Lord. That's the title. This is Valentine's Day. Hope you, I figured, fellas, I needed to remind you all of that. To tell you why if you love her. Some of y'all forgot. Uh, I almost forgot myself, just to be honest. I, I didn't, I, I was awake two hours this morning before all of a sudden the thought would hit me. But anyway, so now, now you know, you have no excuse, but tell your spouse you love her, him, her today, and, and tell God you love him, amen. Why I love the Lord, a special Valentine's message today. And let me say it is mighty good to have Sarah Connor back. It's good to have Diane, uh, Linda's sister, back. Uh, they both have the old COVID stuff, and... I'm sorry for them. It's a very serious matter. To my knowledge, we have not passed 
or no one has caught that stuff here in our church. To my knowledge, we've had, I would like to say all of our church members have been exempt from it. I'd like to say that, that it hadn't been that way, has it? We've had quite a few, but we haven't passed it around here. The Lord's blessed us to have church service and, and be safe. So that's been a good thing. And but it sure scared to have these two ladies back. And, and any of y'all's had it knows it's uh, not, not something you wish on your worst enemy, is it? I mean, I've talked to everybody, all of y'all and this bad stuff. But anyway, we'll, we'll, we will get through this and it'll be in the, in the past one day. Um, but thank the Lord. God's good to us in the good times and the bad times. And today, I hope you say, I love the Lord. So we're going to take this, let's read verse 1, and then I'm going to go from there, okay? And I'm just going to kind of go verse by verse this morning and give you this sermon, especially for Valentine's Day. And in that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee. So we got something to praise the Lord and love him for this morning. And I'm going to tell you why, right? And Andrew's going to come. I don't have to read the whole chapter because y'all already read it. <laughs> so I'm going to call Andrew to come up and have her sermon prayer, and then we'll go from there. Andrew. God, thank you for this Valentine's Day. And just please bless the sermon and bless and help everyone in here. And to be thankful for your love that you gave on the cross for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Isaiah writes here, and if you didn't know better, you just read this because I've been having Jeff read a psalm every week. And if you didn't know what book it was in, you'd think this was one of the psalms, wouldn't you? Because it's a song, it's a song of praise. If you read the chapter right before this, it's about the millennial kingdom when Christ comes back to earth and God brings peace upon the earth. And so the Isaiah is singing a song and praising God for keeping His promises to us. Exactly what He's doing. And isn't that what love is about? Love is about you make a promise and a commitment. And, and you keep it. And I'm afraid to say that human beings, we don't always keep our commitments. Sometimes someone will say they love somebody, then maybe a few years later, all of a sudden they decide they don't. And that, I'll tell you one thing right now, that's not of God. It's not. Because love with God is agape love. It's eternal love. It lasts forever. Something's wrong in a person's heart. I love you today, tomorrow I think I changed my mind. There's something wrong there. But... Isaiah here looks to the future and looks to all as God is going to do. Let me say I've said this before as I preach these verses in Isaiah, but Isaiah lived in a troubling time. Israel was strong under King David. It was strong under King Solomon. But now when Isaiah writes the kingdom's divided, uh, there's going to be exiles and there's enemies that's going to attack them. And, and Isaiah is just looking for a better day. He's looking for the Lord Jesus Christ to come. And there's many messianic chapters and verses in this book. I could literally preach out of this book every Sunday morning for a year. I'm not going to preach that long. We're going to say in it just a few more uh, weeks because Isaiah is such a beautiful book. But let me say, Isaiah just said, I love God and I want to praise Him. And I hope you feel that way this morning. I hope you feel how good God's been to you today. And what do we have to praise God about? I'm going to take it verse by verse. And I've come up with listed seven things. Seven's the number of God. Seven things, reasons why you ought to love and praise the Lord. Number one, I want to say love and praise Him because He's your forgiver. God forgives us. Isn't that a wonderful thing? He says in verse 1, and we're going in verse order, I will praise thee, for thou wast angry with me, and thine anger is turned away. You was angry, but the anger's turned away. Amen? Has God been angry with us? Yes, He has. But thank God He sent His Son. And it was said in Sunday school this morning that John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That is God's Valentine's verse to us. Not that we were worthy. Not, 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 we deserve God's anger. But rather than giving us His anger, He turned that to love and forgiveness. Amen. It's a wonderful thing to be forgiven. I read back in the Old Testament in the days of Noah that God became very angry and disappointed 
with mankind and it grieved him. It said that he created mankind. Amen. Why did, why did he make mankind? And he said, and he was going to destroy mankind, but one man, Noah, found grace in the eyes of God. I will tell you this morning, folks, have you found grace in the eyes of God? Have you found grace through Christ? You can only find grace. You can only be forgiven and find forgiveness through the Lord Jesus Christ. I will praise and love him because thank God, I'll tell you right now, he's my forgiver. I'm not a perfect man. I haven't reached perfection. I will never reach perfection. The Lord Jesus Christ is the only one that ever had. But in forgiveness, a wonderful thing. And thank God when we least deserved it, God has forgiven us if you've been saved. Amen. You know, all through the Bible, their story is forgiveness. And, and if what for God's forgiveness, where would any of us be? I want to tell you right now, we've, another thing we talked in Sunday school this morning about heaven and hell. And there's no in-between. And some religions say there's some kind of a purgatory idea. In other words, the ideal is there's no way God could send most people to one of the two. Heaven's too wonderful. And a lot of folks don't deserve that. And hell's too bad. People don't deserve that. So there must be some kind of place somewhere in the middle. I want to tell you that's not Bible. It's not not a bit of Bible in the world. There's a heaven and a hell. And you say, well, some people don't deserve heaven. Yes, I agree with that. None of us does. If it wasn't for God's forgiveness and saving us, we'd all go to hell. And that's exactly what we all deserve. But thank God. Isaiah here in his nation is sinful, but he says God was angry with us, but his anger has been turned away. Thank God he forgives us. And this morning if you come in this church and you have a guilty conscience, something on your heart, you need to come and ask forgiveness. We have this altar call. And ultimately, if you've never been saved, you need to come because being saved is claiming God's forgiveness. I love the Lord this Valentine's Day because when nobody else would be, He's my forgiver. How about yours? Let's go on a step farther. I'm going to say number two, He's my comforter. Amen. He says here, verse 1, For thou comforted me. Give me forgiveness, you give me comfort. And I was reading this just a week or two ago and thinking at some point I'm going to preach on it. And I noticed a little note where I did preach on this once before. And it is on June the 27th, uh, 2010, which... I do not remember preaching on that, but I do remember what happened that week. That's the week we buried my dad. And I guess I was reading that, getting encouraged at that time. But I want to tell you, it's hard to lose somebody you love, but God comforts you. Do you all believe that? It's hard. I really was worried, Keith, Janet. I was worried about Sarah. I didn't know if she could live alone and get through this thing, but they've what the family tells me. I talked to Janet just a bit ago. I talked to Shad yesterday, and they say the Miss Sayers doing real good. And I want to tell you, Miss Sayers doing, and I mean, I'm, it's never good. Don't let me say it that way. I'm not going to lie about it. But we get through these things. And I, got, I preached on this chapter because 10 years ago, that was the week my daddy died. But I want to say, I can testify myself that God is our comforter. Amen. Rachel said when well, her dad died, she was so young. She was just in her 20s. Lost her dad when he was my age. He died with cancer. And she said he was the man of her life. She didn't know how she'd make it without her dad. But she said God comforted her. Amen. And, and I come into her life about a year later, I think it was, or something another like that. And Not that I in no way could be a good man like her dad was, but God gave her someone else to love and place for her dad. And I want to tell you, God knows how to do that. When you're the lowest, when you're the most lonely, when you're hurting the most, thank God He'll be your comforter. Y'all believe that this morning? Yeah. Let's go a little bit farther. This is Y'all got to get happy this morning. Y'all ate some... Sour grapes this morning. Something now. Y'all get happy. This is a song to make you happy and to say, Thank God. God is good. I will praise Him because He's my forgiver. Because He's my comforter. And let's go on down a little bit further. Verse 2. Behold, the Lord is my salvation. I'm going to praise Him because He saved me. He's my salvation. Amen. And then again in verse 3, Therefore with joy shall you draw out waters of the well of salvation. When I read that well of salvation, I thought of John 4. Because John 4 is the place where 
the, where the, uh, Jesus spoke to the Samaritan lady. And he said, Whosoever believeth in me shall never thirst again. You shall not come to this well, but you will have a well of water springing up into everlasting life. And what is that well? But it's the same well right here that talks about salvation. And I want to tell you, this well of salvation, it never runs dry. Do y'all believe that? That's bad when your well runs dry. I always, when I talk about wells, Mark, I'm sorry, I got to pick on you. That really tickled me about years ago when your daddy told me this. I reckon it is the truth. But he said when Mark, Mark got so girl crazy when he was a teenager, he shampooed his hair twice a day to look his best. And he said he shampooed it so hard and so long, he said he kept making the well run dry. But that was why, about when we were teenagers, I never had a girlfriend. And Mark had about ten of them chasing him at all times. Melinda, I'm sorry, but that's just the truth. But you, you, you was the best and the last. That's the good news. Amen. Mark, I guess I just didn't shampoo enough, did I? I didn't run the well dry. That was my problem. <laughs> I, was, I, I should have been a little bit cleaner, I guess. And, and, and uh, I worked on my appearance a little bit better. Something other. I might have had a girlfriend. But... but, but but Brother Joe said the well kept running dry. That is a situation when all you got is well water and your well runs dry. You in a situation. Let me say, but I want to tell you one well that shall never run dry. Jesus said to the Samaritan woman that, that, that you shall have a well of, of, of everlasting life springing up from your heart. The well of salvation. There was enough to save Isaiah. There was enough to save Noah. There was enough to save David. There was enough to save the apostles. Apostles and, and, and Paul and those of the New Testament time, my grandpa was saved from this well. And this well has still got enough saving power to save you and I and anyone that shall call upon his name. Do y'all believe that? Amen. I praise God. I love him on this Valentine's Day because he is my he's got that well of salvation. He is my Savior, amen. He's my salvation. And let's go on a little bit farther. I want to say number four this morning in that verse, also verse two, He has become my strength and my song. Thank God He's my strength. Thank God He's my song. Amen. Strength is, He said He was a comforter. Comfort and strength, it kind of goes together. But when you're in sorrow, you feel weak. But God raises you back up. And gives you strength. Amen. That's right. We was in Sunday school this morning. We was talking about uh, running races. You got to endure to the end. And uh, Bill Crowder said when he was young, he ran a half a marathon. But he ran out of strength. Bill, I guess now that you're older, you can run that second half, okay? (laughs) Finish that marathon. (laughs) Then something was said about a 100-yard dash. And. I don't even think I could run a 100-yard dash. I, I might could jog a 100-yard dash, but if I run a 100-yard dash, I might not be standing here tonight. Y'all know what I'm talking about? I don't know that I can run anymore. It's one thing to walk fast, walk swiftly, a slight jog, but to run. I'm going to tell you, as you get older, everything, your tendons, your muscles, everything tightens up. It just ain't the same. It just ain't the same anymore, Amen. But I want to tell you one thing right now. This is more than strength in the legs to run a a marathon or whatever. This is strength in your soul. And Isaiah did not have the easiest of life. If you read Hebrews 11, he was put to death. He was martyred, sawed in two in a hollow log. He did not, people didn't like his message. How could you be that hated but yet keep preaching the gospel message that God's given you? I want to tell you this all one way. Isaiah sings this song and he said, God's my strength. He gives me strength to carry on. And he gives me and you strength to carry on. I love the Lord this Valentine's Day. He's my forgiver. He's my comforter. He's my salvation. He's my strength. He's my song. Amen. Amen. You know, Brother Mark, I was just thinking this morning as you read that song. I love these old hymns, and we've sung them so much, you might never really think about the words. But that glory to His name, I was just thinking on that, Brother Mark. This lesson that He's talking about God. Now, there's one thing to say, we got some songs in the book. It's another thing to say, God is my song right down in here. Amen? Amen? And if you really feel God's my song right down in here, it... You can get into singing these songs, amen. And I'm not being no way to, trying to be critical or whatever, but I can't. The 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 the, the, the more modern 
Christian music. It don't touch my heart like these oldies. I'm just being honest with you. I'm not throwing stone, not being critical. But just think about this. Talk about God being your song. Down, let me get it out here. Wait, that is small, ain't Mark? Down at the cross where my Savior died. Down for, for cleansing from sin I cried. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to His name. I was so wonderfully saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides within. There at the cross where He took me in. Glory to His name. O oh, precious fountain that saved from sin. I am so glad I have entered in. There Jesus saved me and keeps me clean. Glory to His name. Come to this fountain so rich and sweet. Cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge in today and be made complete. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. There, at, there to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to His name. Amen. God's my song. Can you, you see, is that words to you? Or is that your life and your testimony? Glory to God's name. He saved me. Oh, Isaiah here, he said, God's become a strength and he's become a song. I will praise God. I love him today. Let's go on down just a little bit further and finish up. Verse 4. And in that day shall ye say, praise the Lord, call upon his name, declare his doings from the people, make mention that his name is excellent. Now here Isaiah starts saying, what I feel in my heart, I'm going to tell other people. I'm going to declare all that God's done to me, I'm going to mention and talk about His name to others. I'd say that verse tells me that God, Isaiah loved Him because God become His testimony and witness. Wouldn't y'all say that? Amen. I remember one time back when Alan Aikens got, first got saved. It was back when the grandkids were little, Alan. Alan took all the grandkids to the fair. They rode the rides. Alan didn't. He, he sat down it was right after you hurt your foot when you had that bad accident. So, but Alan, Alan you're talking about a superstar granddad. You're looking at one right there. I'm telling you, Alan, you was good to those kids. But anyway, Alan called me or I called him. I wasn't there at the fair, but on cell phones. And he said, my, my, my foot, my, my heel hurts too bad to walk around the midway. He said, I found me a chair. I'm sitting at the gate. He said, oh, he said, he said I've seen several of my drinking, my ex-drinking buddies. Not drinking, but he's ex. That's what I meant to say. Former, he said, they, when they come in, I tell them God's changed my life. I don't live that way anymore. I remember, you remember that, Alan? He said, I don't know how many drinking buddies he had. But he, he, but the fire was full of them that night. He said, I've seen a bunch of them. I told them, I don't live that way no more. Jesus saved me. Alan was, what was he doing? He was, he was sharing a testimony and witness of what God had done. Isaiah said, when you love God this much, you cannot be silent about what He is if He's your forgiver and your comfort and your salvation and your strength and your song. He must become the word in your mouth to share with somebody. Witnessing shouldn't be a chore. You ought to love to tell us what the Lord's done for you. One of the people that I that, that is the best witness in this church, and I heard this morning they may get to come back because they're getting the vaccination. That's, that's uh, Brother Jack. Um, Livesey, I want to say Broadnax. That's a different Jack. Jack Livesey. Jack, when he goes to the hospital, no nurse walks in that room. He doesn't tell him the Lord saved him. Because I've been in there visiting him and seen it and heard it happen. And he'll tell every one of them, I was a drunk, but my Savior changed every bit of that in my life. Amen. And he always includes Mary in that too. Because... He asked this. I remember him, he asked Mary for a date, okay, or could they spend time together, whatever. And, and she said, "We'll spend time together going to church when you when you quit your booze and go to church with me and let God. In. Then we'll spend time together." And so he said he loved Mary enough. He figured it was time to straighten up, and he did for Mary's sake. But you say, well, Mary changed his life. Mary did what Isaiah said. Mary told how great God was. God's greater than those bad habits in your life. 
And Jack found the Lord. And, and Jack, he, tell, he tells everybody about the Lord. He tells everybody. But he said here, Isaiah said, I don't care how persecuted, how hated my words are. I will call upon his name. And I will declare his doings amongst the people and make mention the, his excellent name. He has become my witness and my testimony. Therefore, I love him. And last, the last verse why I love the Lord is Valentine's Day. Verse 6. Cry and shout, thou inhabitants of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. I like it said, God is great. But you know what is so wonderful about it? It's those last three words. He's in the midst of thee. What does that mean? I'm going to say I love the Lord because He's my companion. He's with me all the time. Amen? He is with me all the time. Amen? You know, there's... The other day, Rachel said something. Other, she said something about all these years we've been married or something. I don't know something about our anniversary come up, although it's not here yet. But anyway, I said, "How long we've we been married, honey? Eighteen years." She said, "No, our oldest daughter's eighteen. I said, "Okay, well then we definitely had to be married longer than that, for sure. I think it's twenty-one, twenty-two, somewhere in there." But uh, but anyway, there hadn't been honestly, I think two or three nights we haven't laid down side by side in all those years. That's the truth. She was in the hospital a couple of times having more kids. And, and I was at home and then taking care of the ones we had. And then there was, I think, one time she went to a teacher's convention back when she was teaching. But that's a, that's a companion. And we was talking last night. We was on the way home from, we went out and celebrated Valentine's last night. And went, we, the way we celebrate Valentine's, we just celebrate with the whole family. We went out and ate hibachi last night. If we really want to live it up, we eat hibachi. Do y'all like that? Man, that's some good stuff. We're going to have to rest up for lunch today. That, that's, that's the way we celebrate. We say we can't celebrate on Sunday. Two church services, we'll do something special the night before. But we, on the way home, we passed a, a big truck about right over us. It was turning, and we almost, you know how a truck would turn when you're sitting at a red light and cut into you? We about, thought we was going to lose our bumper. But she said, anyways, a comment was made about, well, that truck scared me. And I told her, I said, truck drivers keep America running. You, truck drivers go on strike. This whole country shut down, big time, <laughs> big time. That's why I know them trucks get a little aggravating on the road, but I respect them. I try to stay out of their way because they keep their everything. They're a gasoline at the tank. They're everything you buy at Walmart. Their everything comes on a truck, you know. But but Rachel said, do they make good money? And I said, yes, truck drivers over the road do. But I couldn't hardly do that because. It's just the job as it entails. They're over the road. They're away from their family five, four or five nights in a row. And then, then maybe they'll be home three four nights or something like that. But I, was, I guess you get used to whatever you have to do in life. But uh, companionship with your family, being with your family every night, it is just so important to me, you know, being with my spouse every night. I would, I'd hate to have a job where I had to travel and be gone days at a time. I would hate that, but I guess you get used to whatever you have to, you know. But he says right here, the Holy One is in the midst of us. He's with us. Amen. We've, God is with us. He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. How long is a man saved till he messes it up? That'd be the case if you saved yourself. But when God saves a man, he comes in. And First John, we spread on Wednesday night, his seed remaineth in us. Amen. We're always his child. He's always with us. Amen. Brother Kenneth Pruitt, I remember you telling about how you, when you got out of church those few years, the Lord convicted you and you found your dad on a backhoe up there in Lawrenceville. You remember that? And you said, Daddy, get off this backhoe. i got to talk to you. He said, Son, what's wrong? And Kenneth told his daddy, he said, I'm backslid. And his dad said, well, there's one thing to do. you got to get down here and let's get on your knees and ask forgiveness and come back home. Kenneth, you left God for a while. You got out of church, but God didn't leave you, did he? He was still with you. Thank God I love him because he is always in the midst. He never leaves us. He's our companion. How about this morning? Is this a beautiful psalm right here in the midst of Isaiah or what? Do you love God this morning? Can you say, He's my forgiver. He's my comforter. He's my salvation. He's my strength. He's my song, my witness and testimony and my always companion. 
Oh, he's good, Brother Jeff. Amen. Come on, Mark, get a song. Somebody need prayer this morning? If you can't honestly say that God is all those things to you, it's time to get in the altar. It's time to come home. Somebody needs to accept Christ and be saved. It's time to come be saved. These altars are open. Somebody this morning, for whatever reason, you just want to draw closer to God. Valentine's Day makes us think about love, but some people aren't married. Some people don't have that. Is, is Valentine's Day any good for a single person? Our number one love in life is loving the Lord, isn't it? That comes before any person we love on this. So thank God for a day to remind us how much we need to love God. He is our praise. He's been so good to us. If you need prayer about anything, let's stand at our feet.